Hello there. Welcome to No Extra Words, One Person Search for Story. My name is Chris Baker Dersh. I'm your producer and editor. This is season two, Book Pairings. I'm not 100% sure how the conversation started. I was working as a school librarian, and I had a colleague who worked sort of out of, but not for the library. So she was an aide in the primary classes of this elementary middle school, and the library's workroom had all the things in it that an aide to primary school would need. The laminator, the copier, the book binder, the, you know, all of that stuff that she was doing, helping teachers get ready for their lessons. That all lived in the library. So we would cross paths a lot during the course of any typical day, but she didn't really work for me or with me. And we used to just chat, you know, in passing as we're getting work done in the morning, whatever. And I don't know how or when we started talking about Ezra Jack Keats, but we started talking about Ezra Jack Keats. And I mentioned that in his time, what he was doing was looking out the window of his New York City apartment and seeing the kids who were playing outside and seeing that those kids were not being reflected in children's literature. And so the choice to write about the black and brown children in his neighborhood was a very intentional one. But my friend had stopped listening to me because she was still hung up on the he. And she said, wait a minute, Ezra Jack Keats is not a wise old black lady. For my friend, growing up as an African-American kid in the 1980s, where mainstream portrayal of black children in picture books was still way far from mainstream. So to this day, diverse characters are not as well represented in children's literature as they should be. That's an ongoing problem. We have gotten better, though, than we did during my friend's childhood in the 1980s, and certainly better than during when Ezra Jack Keats was writing in the 1960s. So for my friend, growing up in a world where she didn't see herself and the kids around her in storybooks that often, Ezra Jack Keats was a big deal. This was a writer who she remembered and admired as a child. And you know how when you're a kid, you just picture things in your head? She had always pictured Ezra Jack Keats as this wise old black lady. Well, it turns out that Ezra Jack Keats is a Jewish man, the son of immigrants, who wrote stories about the kids who lived in his neighborhood. So that got me started thinking about the life of Ezra Jack Keats. Fast forward about a half a dozen years. So I was sitting in, of all places, a hospital waiting room. Now, this was not a tragedy. My son and I actually volunteer at a hospital. So we were on break from our shift. And we're sitting in the waiting room, and he brings from the cart a copy of The Snowy Day and hands it to me. Now, I know that I read The Snowy Day as a child. I have memories of this book as a child. This book and a chair from my mother, for some reason, lived together in my head as a child. I'm not sure why. But, you know, it's the kind of thing, it it lives in the back corners of my brain. I remember liking it as a child. I don't remember it having a hugely profound impact on me. But I hadn't read it in a long time. This conversation from six years ago about Ezra Jack Keats aside, the truth is I really hadn't read the book in a really long time. And the good news is, it holds up really well for a book written in 1962. It's a simple story. It's a whimsical story about a little boy named Peter and his adventures playing in the snow. And he tries to preserve the day by putting a snowball in his pocket. There's nothing super special about Peter. And yet there is everything special about Peter. Peter is your quintessential little boy. Oh, yeah. And by the way, P.S. Peter is black. In 1963, when The Snowy Day won the Caldecott Medal for the Best Illustrations, having a black child as the central character of a children's book, and featuring him on the cover, which was actually not Ezra Jack Keats' original plan. His original plan was to put a snowman on the cover. But the editor said, Peter is the story you've got to put on the cover. Way to go, children's book editors. In 1963, this was a big deal. Keats would go on to write more books about Peter and about other kids like him. Peter grew up from this precocious little boy in a snowy day into the big brother of Peter's chair and to being the big kid in High Cat. There would eventually be seven books about Peter. 
and all would feature the wonderful, simple joy that is a child's day. That is Ezra Jack Keats, especially that's what he writes about. It's a day in the life of a child in a perspective that kids understand. And my kid loved a snowy day. He was very worried about, spoiler alert, the melted snowball. But he caught the lovely details in the illustrations. This is um, a collage style book. So it's got great papers in it. It's just beautiful. But this book from 1962 held my 2018 three-year-old attention. Because the truth is, childhood is a very relatable thing, no matter what color you are. And so this every day in the life of a kid, very similar in age to my son, was something that made a lot of sense to him. But for kids who don't see themselves on the cover of books that often, that representation can be magical. Which is why in 2016, Peter got another new life when author Andrea Davis Pinckney paid tribute to him and to Ezra Jack Keats with one of the most memorable picture book biographies of that year. Now, Andrea Pinckney herself has made a lasting, let's just say it, a legendary contribution to children's literature. She's written novels, she's written picture book biographies, she's written some great nonfiction for kids, but she also launched Jump at the Sun Publishing. That's an imprint of Disney's Hyperion Books, and it's the first imprint at a major publishing house to specialize in African-American literature for children. So if anybody knows about the history of representing African-American children in literature, it's Andrea Davis Pinckney. Side note. So, well, as I said, she's written a lot of things you should check out. But actually, one of my favorite things by Pinckney is her contribution to Scholastic's Dear America series, which is With the Might of Angels, The Diary of Donnie Ray Johnson. Now, if you've ever avoided Dear America because you think it's this kind of stock formulaic historical fiction for kids, you know, I think I did for a while because I just assumed these were the American girl type books. Stop avoiding this series <laughs> because they have gotten some of the best writers out there who are writing for children right now to contribute to the series. And Pinkney's one of them. Great book. Pinkney's biography of Keats is called A Poem for Peter. And that's what it is. It's a poem. She describes it in the book's back matter as a tapestry narrative or a collage poem, which is an appropriate match for Keats, who was a collage artist. And the poem is a thank you to the fictional little boy who opened the world of children's literature. And through that thank you, it tells the story of the man who brought Peter to life. Now, this is not our first episode to feature picture book biographies, and we went through them a lot in the last episode. I don't want to spend a ton of time talking about the genre per se, but writing a picture book biography is a great way, in particular, to honor a picture book writer. All the details of Keats' story are here. His immigrant parents, his poor upbringing, the father who wanted to support his art but was afraid because he thought it was a foolish venture, his work with the WPA and the army. In some ways... The story of Esther Jack Keats will feel similar to the story of Marie Sendak if you were around for episode 102. Like Sendak, Keats was the child of Polish Jewish immigrants and grew up in New York City. And like Sendak, he managed to find some work as an artist, some paid work as an artist, which led him into illustrating children's books and eventually writing children's books. Peter, who didn't get a name until later, um, he... Keats named Peter after the son of a collaborator of his. There's a, I'll put a link in the show notes, the article by her about that. That's where he got his name. But in terms of the little boy himself, the sort of image of this boy, there was a boy who was in a Life magazine spread. And Keats had that picture thumbtacked to his bulletin board for a long time until the time came for Peter to come to life. Now, Pinckney addresses her poem to Peter. So this book is in the second person. It's all about you, the you being Peter. And she's telling to you the story of this author's life. She's telling the story of his life to one of his more memorable characters. It's such a great perspective for this book to have. And of course, she doesn't tell it like I tell it. <laughs> she weaves it together. It's poetry, it's gratitude, it's celebration. And oh, yeah, it's also biography. It has that day in the life, cut and paste, small experiences feel to it, just like Keats's books. But it's just so amazing what a picture book biography can do. On page 36 of what is ultimately a 45-page book, we finally actually get 
to the character we've been talking to all along. We finally get to Peter. Although we've been talking about Kate, so we've been talking to Peter. And there he is, fully formed, made by the experiences that came before him. And a few pages later, he and Ezra Jack Keats are holding hands in the snow. Which somehow in the context of this book makes total sense. This very real author who created this fictional boy standing in the snow holding his hand. And it, it brings you to tears. Because it's this beautiful celebration about huge things, groundbreaking things, and also really, really simple things, like being a little boy, like Peter, because that's what the Peter books are ultimately really about at the end of the day. They're not about race. They're not about immigration. They're not about culture. They're not about assimilation. They're not about social change. They're about being a little boy. Which is, of course, why they capture the imagination of my tiny dirt street little boy, who earlier this year crawled into my lap in a hospital waiting room and reintroduced me to Peter. And which is why I had to introduce you to Peter and to Keats as that little boy, my little boy, was turning four. Because it is worth celebrating the life of a little boy. And because, believe it or not, it really is the very little things that change the world. I hope you've enjoyed this book pairing. If you know someone on whom Peter has had an impact, or if someone needs a reintroduction to Peter, I hope you will share this episode with them. If you want to hear all of our book pairings, like the Sendak episode I mentioned earlier and all the stuff coming up, you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or Spotify. Or here's a hint. If you have an Android device, just Google No Extra Words and use a little play button. You can listen right there. Coming next episode, we're going to celebrate three years of No Extra Words, for real, guys. And we are going to go in-depth into a, how a reader, this reader, came to be by looking at two girls named Betsy. You're never required to read along with us. But if you want to, we're going to take a look at Betsy Tacy by Maud Hart Lovelace and its sequels, but we'll mostly stick with that one, and B is for Betsy by Carolyn Haywood. We are also, next episode, going to launch our summer series, and I'll introduce you to that at that time. I'm super excited about it. As usual, with the way life is these days, I'm not committing to a release date, but our podcast anniversary is May 29th, so I'm going to try to get that episode to you by then. In the meantime, come connect with me. We are noextrawords.wordpress.com, where you can find show notes and all the ways to find us, including Instagram and Twitter. And I love connecting with listeners over on Goodreads, where I am goodreads.com slash noextrawords. Until we see you next time, I hope you go out into the world and find a good story.